Hey everyone, today's video is all about fixing pairs of minis, as I've been running an Etsy shop for over three years and definitely had a fair share of them. So I'm going to be covering the most common ones I've had and then how to actually solve them. They're going to be more of categories, but with that said, let's get straight into it. Ironically, the first one is one that this printer currently has, which is why it's not printing. And this is the PTFE tubes. The PTFE tubes are always a pain, and that's not just this big visible one. In fact, the one that's currently an issue, uh, at least pretty sure based on the looks of this right here, is the hidden one. There's a hidden one right here that you have to unscrew and then pull out and replace. It's an annoying one, and originally I thought it was a nozzle issue the first time I had it, and I ended up spending a whole bunch of time going around until I finally realized that you just pop it out and replace it. This said, I don't recommend getting it from Prusa unless you buy a ton of them or buy it with something else, as shipping can be very expensive. So what I've done is I've got some from Amazon, a whole roll of it. So what I recommend doing is cutting it like over 0.1 or 0.2. Uh, I have a very imprecise way. Ideally, you'd have a more precise way of measuring it, but I currently don't. As a result, I just cut it where I think is about estimate and then if it's working, I'll know because it will print a full print. But doing this way is I also will have PTFE tube for the long ones as multiple times I've had the, these long PTFE tubes actually snap through and the filament just comes out, which is a pain because you do have to unload all the filament and then re-spool it. But then to actually replace the PTFE tube, you have to unscrew both ends and actually unscrew this section right here. And then once you do that, you'll have to end up cutting it if you want to salvage the other metal piece. If you do it this way and you're getting your own PTFE tube, you also will have to get some of these olive bearing things so that you can attach, reattach these metal pieces to the larger PTFE tube. Again, make sure the measurements are correct. And once you do this, make sure to tighten it real tight. Otherwise, you'll have issues with the PTFE tube just sliding out of these metal pieces which can also be a pain. So just make sure you do it right the first time by tightening it real good and you should be good. As uh, another PTFE tube that can cause issues is even the one that's holding this filament sensor. As right now, it's currently annoying to load because it's actually been punctured. I haven't bothered replacing it because luckily that one doesn't cause fails. So that's the PTFE tube issues. Definitely the most unreliable part of the printer. But with that said, let's go to the second major point of failure which may or may not actually be the printer. Okay, so this actually works out really well. Turns out this printer did not have a PTFE tube issue and it was actually just what the next category is about, which I'm calling just being dumb, AKA filament issues. Basically, you can see right here that the filament spool came off the roll and as a result, it ends up pulling and getting clogged. This is mainly an issue because the Prusa Minis have external holders and mounts. I find these ones that I've printed uh, work better. It's still not perfect, but it does lessen that fact. Another thing that can kind of go along the same lines of the filament is if you tangle it. I've definitely done this before and that's very annoying because you have to unload the filament and then rewind it to make sure it's not tangled. Real pain, but definitely has the same results as what here looks like either a PTFE tube issue or filament issue. While definitely a very simple issue, it's definitely one to be aware of. Otherwise, you'll go and try and fix a PTFE tube like I almost did and then find out that it really wasn't that in the first place. Though you'd probably find out when you go to unload it. Basically, just be careful when you're putting filament on the printer. Make sure that it's not turned or make sure it's actually properly on. Also, if you're using the default Prusa ones, then you'll need to make sure that this right here is actually the right size of the spool. That's what happened here. It wasn't the right size and it just fell off. Final thing in this category is if you are using another type of material like flex and then go from flex to PLA, you'll need to make sure that you have the temperature high enough that it can still purge out all the leftover flexible filament. Otherwise, this will clog it because it will go to print and it's not hot enough to extrude it all the way. So it causes problems. So yeah, there's that category. That category can really go for all printers, though especially for the Prusa Mini because it does have external filament holders. 
as I've never actually really had that same exact instance of this one happen on the Prusa XL because it has built-in ones. You'd probably renovate the Prusa Mini so that it actually has a built-in one, and that may actually be beneficial. But anyways, let's move to the next category. Boom! So last and final common issue I've had is wires. This one will not be noticeable right away even though the cause would have happened during assembly. The main thing, culprit of it, is that the sleeve isn't all the way on. As you can see, this one actually isn't all the way on at the current moment. And the same thing can happen with the heat bed. This is a really annoying one as it would just start beeping on the printer without really a clear explanation. It would tell you something's wrong with the hot end or heat bed, but you won't really know which. So what I suggest doing is looking at the wires, seeing if one of either the heat bed or hot end has a clear indication of rubbing. If the air has been rubbing a lot on it, then you could potentially have partly shorted it, and that's kind of what's causing the issue. In which case, then, and what I did is I put electrical tape. This isn't the ideal solution, but you should probably just get a new wire but that seems to work at the time being, but also make sure the sleeve is all the way on. This you can just do regardless of whether you have this problem right now, as it's definitely something that could come to bite you later on. As the rubbing won't be immediately, it's just over a long time, the friction buildup is going to start wearing it down. So that's what you need to be aware of. This is also part of the reason why the first Prusa Mini I got, which was semi-assembled, had the wires and already assembled right here. It didn't really have to worry about it. And then later on the other two printers that I got, I did it myself. And this is where it caused the issue as I've actually had to replace it. For the heat bed, I've just bought a new one as it ruined the one entire heat bed, which was kind of lame because then you have to buy a new one. And as far as the hot end, like I mentioned, this seems to have done the trick. If you're getting this beeping and there's no clear signs, then you can also go into the wires itself and use a multimeter and then press them down. And if it's getting a reading that's really high, then more than likely there's an issue with the wires. So there we go. Those are the most common issues I've had with the Prusa Mini. As you'll notice, that last one is more of a fringe case and you might be wondering why it's common. That's mainly because most issues with the Prusa Mini are one-time occurrence, or I don't really see them. There's a lot of issues that I've seen online that I've never encountered, and those are just the most common ones. The one with the wires I've happened to have three or four times, yeah, really annoying. There's even a couple weird ones that I had where the bed, the thing that's holding it, actually managed to fall off and did this result. Yeah, kind of weird. As far as nozzles, I actually don't have to replace the nozzles really ever because I'm mainly printing with PLA so it's not very abrasive. I've done it a couple times because I thought it was that but it really end ultimately ended up being the PTFE tube. So yeah again the PTFE tube is the main thing that you have to be aware with the Prism Mini. Hopefully this video has helped and I'll see you later. Bye.